Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Holy Quran the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran pertaining to Ramadan and the fast of Ramadan. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun ayyaman ma'adudat فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدِيَةٌ تَعَامُ مِسْكِينٍ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَأَنْ تَسُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed the fast of Ramadan, enjoining it upon the believers and making it one of the pillars of Islam, one of the five pillars upon which this religion is built. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the fast of Ramadan and made in fact the month of Ramadan a period of training says la'allakum tattakun so that we would develop consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we would develop taqwa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so in order to benefit from this important training period we need to prepare for the holy month of ramadan it is important for us to prepare for this holy month of Ramadan in order to reap the maximum benefits from this month. The noble messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his noble companions used to look forward to the coming of this blessed month of Ramadan. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam would say in his supplication, Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, bless us in the month of Rajab and bless us in the month of Sha'ban and help us to meet and spend Ramadan in a deserving manner. And so even from the month of Rajab, two months before Ramadan, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam would focus the attention of the community of, of the Sahabas on this blessed month of Ramadan so that the community can prepare for Ramadan. Ramadan is certainly a month of excitement and enlightenment for Muslims. It is a month of the revelation of the Holy Quran. The month of reading and reciting this noble Quran. It is the month of Tahajjud and Qiyam al -layl. It is the month of the special, unique ibadah of Salatul Taraweeh, the nightly Taraweeh prayers. It is the month of Sadaqah, the month of Zakatul Fitr, the special charity for Eid al Fitr. And it is the month of Zakatul Mal, the annual Zakat that we give usually in this blessed month of Ramadan. It is also a month of social activities among Muslims. But we must understand that Ramadan is a guest that comes to visit us. And no one would go anywhere without preparation. And no one would invite a guest to their home without preparing to welcome that guest. And similar is our response to the coming of this guest of Ramadan. I ask you, if an important person is coming to visit you, someone who you love much, who you respect a great deal, if that person is coming to visit you, to be your guest for a few days, would you not prepare to welcome and to receive that person? To prepare and clean your home and do all the things that are necessary so that they would be comfortable 
when they come and stay with you because it's an important guest that is coming to visit you. What about the guests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending to us? The noble guest of Ramadan. How should we receive this guest? How should we prepare for this guest? How should we treat this guest while it is here with us for a few days? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayyama ma'dudat. It is a month, but before we know it, as we look forward for Ramadan, it would come upon us suddenly. And the next thing we know, Ramadan is departing us, it is leaving us. Such is, such is the nature of this special guest that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that comes from the noble messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so it is important for us to prepare for this blessed month of Ramadan. And we want to mention some of the things that we should do in order to receive and welcome this noble month. Firstly, try to fast on Mondays and Thursdays, starting from now, before the month of Ramadan. This is the weekly sunnah. The two days of the week that the Prophet ﷺ would usually fast. He would fast on Mondays and Thursdays. He said, when he was asked once, he said that he was born on a Monday. And he wants to fast on the day of his birth to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On another occasion, he says, these are the times when our weekly deeds, our actions, our deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wants to be fasting when his deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we should start doing this now to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But also to get accustomed to, to, to the routine of fasting, to getting up in the morning uh, and having our suhoor and, and uh, preparing for Salat al-Fajr and performing Salat al-Fajr and, and then continuing our, our daily activities throughout that day and then in the evening to break our fast at Maghrib time and so on, to get into the routine of the fast. Start doing that from now on Mondays and, and Thursdays every week and, and as the time of Ramadan comes closer, we may want to increase uh, those days of fast and especially in the month of Sha'ban, because the Prophet ﷺ used to fast in Sha'ban more than in any other month except the month of Ramadan, which was a complete month of fasting. And so uh, use this opportunity, use this occasion, use this time to prepare for Ramadan by fasting and start on Mondays and Thursdays of every week because that's the sunnah uh, for the weekly fast. Secondly, start reading the Quran daily, perhaps after Salat al-Fajr. Yes, put this into your routine that every day after Salat al-Fajr, you would pick up the book of Allah, pick up this Qur'an and recite from this book. Start doing that now. Let it be part of our routine. If, even if it is just one page that we would recite. We start doing that and every day we continue uh, reciting this Qur'an. And when we get more time, perhaps on weekend, then we would extend the time that we spend reciting the Qur'an, maybe several pages. And, and keep doing that uh, to get accustomed to reciting this Qur'an, to prepare for Ramadan. Because Ramadan is the month of Qur'an. It is the month in which we want to recite the Qur'an. And it is a good practice for the believers to strive to complete the recitation of the Qur'an at least once in the blessed month of Ramadan. And that would require us to recite one juz of the Qur'an every day. Because the Qur'an is divided into 30 parts, into 30 juz. And, and in Ramadan, if we recite one juz of the Qur'an every day, then by the end of the month, we would complete the recitation of the Qur'an. But don't wait for the month of Ramadan to start this routine because it would be dif difficult for us. It is good to start it now, to prepare for the month of Ramadan. Thirdly, spend some time listening to the recitation from the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, today there are many wonderful reciters of the Qur'an. Uh, and and they, their recordings are easily available for us. So we should, you should uh, select those recitations that you, you enjoy listening to. Uh, purchase them and have them in your home. And then start listening to the recitation of the Qur'an. Uh, and perhaps uh, follow it in your Qur'an so that you would improve your own recitation of the Qur'an and you would improve your tajweed of Qur'an and you would develop this love uh, and this active ongoing relationship with the Qur'an. Fourthly, 
train yourself to go to bed early so that you can wake up for Salat al-Fajr. One of the problems is that uh, some people complain that they're not able to get up for Salat al-Fajr. And they're not able to get up for suhoor, to have something to eat, to prepare for the fast. And it may be because we go to bed too late, and we're tired at the time of Fajr, we can't get up. And so if, if we need to uh, go to bed earlier, we should do that. And, and get into this practice, go to bed early and wake up early. And in fact, this is the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. He would go to bed uh, after Salat al-Isha. He would go to retire to bed after Salat al-Isha, and then he would get up early in the morning before Fajr Salah, so that he can do Salat al-Tahajjud. And this is a wonderful example, and we, just, we should try to, to do this. Go to bed early, so that we can wake up early for Salat al-Fajr. Keep yourself in a state of wudu at all times. This is a wonderful training to prepare for Ramadan. To, to always try to be in a state of wudu, in a state of purity, uh, physical cleanliness and purification. The Prophet ﷺ says that this is one of the causes for the barakah of Allah, for the blessing of Allah, for the ni'mah and bounty of Allah to come to us and to flow in our lives when we are in a state of wudu. It attracts the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustenance and the providence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so strive to be always in a state of wudu. Uh, some of us only wait until it is time for us to pray and then we go and, and, and make our wudu. But even when we don't have to pray or we don't intend to pray or it's not the time of the five daily prayer, we should still maintain our wudu. And so if we do anything to, to nullify or void our wudu, such as uh, using the washroom and so on, then immediately we should renew our wudu. So we are always in a state of wudu. And, and we can be doing dhikr throughout that time and gain the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six, evaluate yourself daily before going to bed. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the good deeds you, you did on that day and repent to Him for the mistakes and sins you've committed. And this is a wonderful exercise to start doing. Uh, when we go to bed at night and we lie down in bed, uh, we, we make our dua uh, for sleeping, uh, following the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. We should recite uh, the, the four quls, uh, the, those surahs at the end of the Qur'an. We should recite Ayatul Kursi. But we should also spend a moment or two to reflect on our day. This is an excellent training technique for us to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. Look at our day from the time we got up that day uh, at Fajr time and until we are now in our bed retiring for the night. And think about the good deeds that we do, the good things that we do. Go over that day and all the good deeds that we do. And as we remember those good deeds, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to do those good deeds, for allowing us f to obey Him, for, for choosing us to obey Him. Yes, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on this day He chose us to obey Him, that we prayed our five daily prayer, that we recited the Qur'an, that we made dua to Allah, that we engaged in the dhikr of Allah, that we helped someone, that we did some good deed, that we work an honest day of work, that we studied useful things, we achieve useful things in our day and so on and so forth. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the good things we did on this day. And in addition to that now, we look in, at our day and we, we try to identify the mistakes that we made. Uh, if we committed any sins, try to recognize those and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those sins and mistakes. Uh, and, and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from those sins, to, to protect us from committing sins uh, in, 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 in the future days of our lives. And, and we, we keep this thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue to engage in the dhikr of Allah uh, before we, we go to sleep. And, and when we do that, subhanallah, our night would become a night of rest and peace and serenity and security for us. And we get up that the next morning in time for tahajjud or salat al-fajr and we're, we're energized to, to go on, 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 to take that new day and, and to receive the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And this is a wonderful preparation for the month of Ramadan because in Ramadan we would get a chance to live out what we have prepared now and what we are preparing now. Number seven, give yourself some time alone so that you can meditate, make dhikr, tasbih and takbir and tahmeed and tahleel and other forms of dhikr. You will experience spiritual elevation and you will enjoy life tremendously. So you need to give yourself some time for yourself. Because sometimes we, we get so busy with, with the dunya, with our, the preoccupations of this world, with the requirements of our daily lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Alhaqum takathur hatta zurtumul maqabir. That we, we are so busy with the things of the dunya that we, we lose perspective on what really matters. And the next thing we know, we are visiting our graves. And, and so sometimes we need to, to take a step back, if I can use that expression, give ourselves some time for ourselves and, and, and think about what we are doing and reflect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can put things in their proper perspective and, and reclaim the balance in our lives. Yes, give yourself some time alone. Meditate on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engage in the dhikr of Allah. And this dhikr of Allah can be done at any time, in any condition, in any situation. Recite the words of dhikr, the words of remembrance of Allah that, is, that, that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to recite. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, simple words, easy for us to say, but beautiful words which are significant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and th th this would bring us back to reality, bring us down to earth if I can use that expression, uh, so that we would look at life in a pragmatic way. We need to give ourselves some time for ourselves. Number eight, those who can afford to make Umrah before Ramadan comes, they should do so. And those who are able to perform Umrah in Ramadan should do so. Remember that Umrah in Ramadan is equivalent to a Hajj. And so, if someone is able to do this and you have the opportunity, then do so. To, to, to make Umrah before Ramadan, visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to prepare for Ramadan. And if you're able to do it in Ramadan, uh, it's even greater because the, the Umrah in Ramadan is rewarded as a Hajj. Uh, what, what a great blessing this is. Uh, but the point that we need to recognize is that there is a need for us to connect with the center of Islam, with the heart of Islam. And that throbbing heart is Umul Qura, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. It's the mother of all places, the mother of all cities and towns and villages. Umul Qura, Mecca al Mukarrama. The, the city that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the most special city on this earth and chose that place to establish uh, his first house of worship, uh, Masjid al Haram, Al Ka'batul Musharrafa. Uh, and and to, for us now to have that ongoing connection with that uh, center of Islam, that first house of worship established for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Umrah uh, or the lesser pilgrimage, which can be done at any time in the year, uh, is something which helps to achieve this objective in order for us to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. Number nine, start giving sadaqah daily, no matter how little it is. Make it a habit like eating and drinking to give sadaqah. I get in the habit of spending for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, no matter how little it is. I give you a wonderful example of, of the noble companion Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. This uh, noble companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to give sadaqah after each and every salah when he would pray in Masjid al-Nabawi in Medina. When he finished his prayer, he would go out of the masjid and he would look around to, for someone that he can give sadaqah to and he would give it to them. And he wasn't a wealthy person by no means. Oftentimes, it may just be a date or a few dates that he would give to someone with the knee of sadaqah. And he would do this after each salah, five times every day. And then some of the sahabas asked him, 
Ya Abu Dhar, why do you do this? We notice you give sadaqah after each and every salah. Why are you doing this? And then he, he, he told them, do you not read the book of Allah? Do you not recite the Quran? Every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran to pray, He commands us to spend in His way. Wherever in the Quran, without any exception, wherever in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to pray, He also commands us to spend in His way. And it's there in the Quran. So Abu Dhar al-Ghifari saw that and he lived it. He lived it and so the Sahabas knew why he was doing it and they started to do the same as well. To strive in whatever little way we can to give, spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we knew of the great blessings of sadaqah, of spending in the way of Allah, we would keep nothing with us. We would give it all, we would give it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives to us. And when we spend for his sake and pleasure, he spends on us, he gives to us as well. So start to give sadaqah daily to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. Find time to pray extra nawafil salah, such as salatul duha, qiyamul layl, salatul tahajjud. Yes, try to find some time in our busy day to perform the nawafil salah, the extra optional prayer uh, throughout the day. There are those nawafil salah at the time of the five daily farad prayer. Then we should try to do that. When we do our farad prayer, we try to do our sun and do our nawafil as well. And then there are other nawafil salah in between the five daily farad salah that we should learn about, we should know about, and then do that. For example, after sunrise, in the morning after Fajr, there's Salat al-Ishraq. And then in the mid-morning, there's Salat al-Duha. And then after Salat al-Maghrib, between Salat al-Maghrib and Salat al-Isha, there's Salat al-Awwabin. And then in the night, there's Salat al-Tahajjud. And then Salat al or the Nafil Salat can be done at any time. Uh, that, that other than the, the times that it's prohibited to pray, uh, such as when the, when the sun is at its midpoint and midday, when the sun is rising in the morning, when the sun is setting in, eve, in the evening. Other than that, it's open time for nafil salah, for us to do as much as we are able to do. So find some time, maybe 10 minutes or so every day, that we can do some extra rakat of nafil salah in order to prepare for the blessed month of Ramadan. Number 11, spend more time reading Islamic books, especially the, the Holy Quran and books on Sirah and Hadith and Fiqh and so on. Yes, we should try to get some time in, in our, our routine, in our schedule to, to read Islamic books. And the most important book is the book of Allah, the Holy Quran. And we said every day we should try to recite from this Quran. Now in addition to that, in addition to reciting the Quran, perhaps... Uh, we should get the translation of the Quran in a language that we understand, for example, English, and, and recite from uh, uh, that translation so that we can start to know something more about the meaning of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the books of Sirah, the, the life history of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the books of Hadith, and the books of Fiqh, and so on. Try to read, read Islamic books so we would gain knowledge of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Noble Messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would want us to do. Find time to help others with your wisdom, your knowledge and other talents. Uh, try try to, to help others. Try to help others uh, in whatever way you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you in many ways with many things. The knowledge that you have, the skills that you have, the, the experience that you have, the know-how that you have, the things that you're able to do, uh, the wealth that you have and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed each one of us in different ways with many things. And it is good for us to spend some time trying to help others pass on some of the things that we've gained in life as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pass it on to others. Find some time to, to help others. And this is an important thing to do, uh, to prepare for this blessed month of Ramadan. And, and to do this khidmah or service for the deen. And always do it with the niyyah that we want to, to, to gain the good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To do things to help other people. 
remember this beautiful hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu in which he says, Inna abwab al khair la kathira. Verily, the gates to goodness are many, are numerous, are countless. Yes, so uh, now we, I'm mentioning so many things that we should do, and you may wonder, how would I find time to do all of these things in my day? But the moment you start, and, and the first step is this niyyah that we should have in our heart to do these good things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we have this sincere niyyah, and we make this effort to do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would open the doors for us to do these many good things. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be from Ahlul Khair, from the people of goodness, from Ahlul Ihsan, people who would do good things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to prepare for the month of Ramadan and enjoy the blessings of the, the, the great month of Ramadan.